Another day, another pastor stepping down over misconduct allegations. We're going to get into it and talk about Pastor Ben Corson in just a second, guys. Quick, if you could, please like this video, share it, hit the bell, subscribe, and wear the glasses because I'm blind. So Oregon Mega Church here, Applegate Christian Fellowship. They're located in Jacksonville, Oregon, very close to Medford. They're now former lead pastor Ben Corson has resigned his position over multiple allegations of misconduct that he had with women there that attended the church. And what a mess that this whole thing was. I, I mean, I just, you know, and I've been covering this, guys, these pastors that have, you know, had to either step down or they've been fired and, and many of them also put in jail for these same actions. But you know what? It's just like this just continues and we go on and on with this. But I've said that I think God is just flushing the church out of these people, trying to get them out and expose them for who they truly are. Ben Corson, somebody with over 150,000 followers on social media. He's on over 500 different radio and TV broadcasts for his ministry. Very young as well. Key there, only 33 years old. But he took over for his father, John Corson, who had just resigned in May of 2020. He stepped down and announced that his son, Ben, would be taking over as the lead pastor. And it was actually, the timing of it was right after Ben had gotten divorced. And apparently several pastors, former pastors there of the church, had pointed this out to John. He just kind of dismissed it. They said, look, he's probably not ready for this. He's probably in no position to be leading a church as young as he is. But John just dismissed it. He allowed Ben to go ahead and take the pulpit. All of this started in June, a couple of months back, June 2021. These women started to come forward. Some saying that they were in a relationship with Corson at the time, but that he abused that, that he would force himself upon them, that he was doing things that were uncharacteristic of a pastor. Even they couldn't believe it. That oftentimes they had to push him away. They had to get out of situations where he had them in these, you know, I you know, I think you guys get it, okay? Uh, several of these incidents occurred, uh, them being at his house, on his couch. Uh, these women were just appalled by what he did. First, it was three women. Then it was four. A fourth woman came out and confirmed that Corson had also engaged in the misconduct with her. And now apparently all of these women are receiving counseling uh, at a nearby church that's offering this counseling to them after they heard about what Corson did. But he admitted to this back in June, there was an elders meeting that was held. Corson admitted to what took place. Uh, after all this started to come into fruition, social media posts started going out there by some of these women. He admitted it, but still the church kept him on the staff. Instead, they had another idea. We'll change his title. From senior pastor to something else. I'll tell you what that is in just a second. Really quick though, guys, if you could, consider making a generous donation here to our ministry as we're demonetized here on YouTube. They don't support what we do as Christian conservative content creators. You can help out in a big way through either Patreon or PayPal. The link's down below. Even just five bucks a month on Patreon, you get bonus content. Also, we include the links to the YouTube videos there to make sure you get all the alerts when the new content arrives. Plus there, you can also comment censorship-free on the videos. YouTube is trying to block you guys more and more now. Also, big reminder, sub to me on Rumble. That's our backup in case we're kicked off of YouTube. We're already posting there, so go check out. All the links are down below. A big thank you to everybody already contributing. And for those of you thinking of doing so, God bless you. It is much appreciated. But they had this idea. We'll just start to call Ben instead of the senior pastor. We'll call him the Hope Generator. Now, that's what we'll do. He won't have the title of senior pastor. No, Hope Generator. That was going to just solve all the problems right there. <laughs> It, crazy. And also, some of the women had said that Ben had, well, justified his actions, the misconduct, because he wasn't somebody that really ever preached on relationships or dating or sex. He never, never preached about that. In fact, even at one point, he said he doesn't like to look at himself as a pastor, but instead more as a motivational speaker. Oh, there you go, right there, a motivational speaker. How many times have I talked about that with the megachurch pastors, how they are more like motivational speakers than they are actual pastors? And here you have one actually admitting to it, that that's how they view themselves. And as far as the comment about how, oh, 
He doesn't speak on dating. He doesn't speak on relationships. That was a complete lie. He was actually at Pastor Greg Laurie's church back in June doing an entire seminar on dating, talking about relationships. And he was on a podcast talking about it as well. So he was exposed as a liar again. It wasn't until August 8th at the church where a video aired of Ben and he had confessed that he made mistakes during his dating relationships with these women, but that he was going to be stepping aside. Now, only stepping aside for six months, taking some time, a little sabbatical, an administrative leave. No doubt he's still going to be getting paid for this. But many of the church elders are saying that an independent investigation needs to be held. This guy should be behind bars, okay? No way should he be returning to the pulpit after six months. And still, his father, John, is basically defending him and just saying, well, there's good and some people, there's bad and some people, but he's repented of these and we need to just, you know, just move on. The guy should be disqualified from ministry. He has no business being behind a pulpit. Plain and simple. Plain and simple here. There, there's nothing else to it. He should be gone for what he did here. Elders also, you know, when they found out about this and they brought this information in June, two of them resigned because the church said they were going to do nothing about it and just give him that new title as the hope generator. So they were gone. It wasn't until more of these women started coming out that finally come to August and now he's and now he's gone. But let, let's hope an investigation does take place here uh, and that we can get this guy behind bars because uh, what's been happening here is absolutely crazy. Uh, I'll put the link down below. You guys want to read the full report. Uh, the, the Roy's report did a great job of putting this together. There's so much more detail. I won't get into all of it here on this video, uh, but you guys can read it for yourself. Uh, a lot there, definitely. Some stuff I couldn't talk about here, obviously. But look, this is why we do these videos. We talk about the prophetic news headlines going on around the world because we are in the last days and Jesus Christ is coming back soon. The question is, do you know him as your Lord and Savior? Because if not, we want to give you this opportunity like we do on all of our videos. And you can do this prayer in your own words, but I'll give you the steps you need in order to bring that prayer before the Lord as the first thing you want to do is you want to acknowledge that you're a sinner. Now, it's something we all are, that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you need to do, though, is that you need to repent of your sin. And repent means to turn from that sin, not just to say you're sorry, but to actually turn from a lifestyle or habit, whatever it is in your life that goes against the word of God. You ask Jesus to forgive you, he'll wipe that sin away. The Bible says he won't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I will have more for you guys on this down below. You can let me know your thoughts. Maybe you attend the church there, Applegate Christian Fellowship. You can provide some more insight as to what's going on there now. Don't forget also the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you can help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.